is Sunday, the 17th day of July, year 2022. Hi, my name is Ivlo Warner, and I'm one of the assistant pastors here. And I want to greet you and welcome you here into our sanctuary this morning. Thank God for you. Thank God for what he's doing in your life. It doesn't matter what the enemy is trying to do. Amen. And so he's bringing sickness on many of us to get us always to turn back. You know, but we can trust God. And we know we're going to a good place. We need to remind him about that if we should die. Or we need to remind him of the other time when he did such and such and God delivered us. And so I am not going to be afraid of you and, 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 and your little shenanigans that you're, you're doing to me or to my family because I have proven God that he is more than able to do what he says he will do, to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Amen? So I know some of us are battling cancer, like myself. And uh, other things, amen? I know many of us are going through financial difficulties and all we hear is the talk of, uh, 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 of the economy not being good around the world. You know, inflation is taking over. Well, I want to let you know that the word of God is taking over and has been taking over and it's going to reach to the farthest parts of the earth. Men. And and the enemy is not going to stop it. Come on. Amen? And so we want to thank God for that. Yes. And so I am welcoming you here this morning to our sanctuary. Come right in and participate in what God has prepared for us. He prepares a table before uh, for us before our enemies and anoint our heads with oil. In other words, he's given us his spirit to profit with a layman. Amen. And so we are going to use the might and power of the Holy Spirit yes, to do amen. what God has called us to do. Amen. amen. And so um, let me quickly uh, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Amen. But thanks be unto God who always leadeth us in triumph in Christ. And make it manifest through, through us the Savior of his knowledge in every place. So the Savior is manifested in us in every place. We had our pastor go on uh, his honeymoon uh, anniversary uh, a week ago when you, know, you hadn't seen him. Uh, he was uh, in the Caribbean and like I said... He was trying to be humble, and he had just had the testimony. Uh, but God exposed him. Why? Because Jesus in him manifested out so that those people that were there needed to hear what he had to say. And it was awesome. Amen? So he will manifest himself out of us, and we may not even know it. A kind word to somebody who has a problem. Maybe somebody at the grocery store didn't have all the money. And you say, oh, wait a minute. Let me take care of that. Uh, and they'll recognize you. Uh, and you'll be able to have a chance to tell them that you trust in the Lord. And that's why you're able to do what you're doing. Amen. Amen. So thank God for that word. <clears throat> Amen. Mm. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Okay, let me greet. Let me greet some, some of the folks. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Okay. Global Revival Africa. Um, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. And our, our point of contact, uh, her name is uh, Grace. Sister Grace Dina. And uh, we thank God for the work that you're doing. And uh, don't stop doing it because your reward is great. Here on earth and in heaven. Amen. Um, yes. Word of God Ministries International. And our beloved uh, Pastor Das. And her congregation. We welcome you here this morning. And we thank God for you. And we'll continue to pray for you and others. 
in our in our weekly prayer meeting that we have on Friday nights. It's it's at uh, eight thirty p.m. You want to join us? You can. And most of us don't work on Saturdays. Most of us. So then, if you're up until you know th that time of night or in morning time, and you want to join us because you may not have to work on Saturday, please feel free to join us. Amen. So thank you, Pastor Das, for all your faithful work that you're doing uh, concerning the word of the Lord and his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, let me shout out to the branches of Breaking Barriers Ministry uh, in Industry Pastor Ruth Granham, in Wartmanville, uh, Pastors Simone and Lon McBain, um, in Agricola, Pastor um, um, Pastor Sanford, um, Jewel Sanford, and in Tuckville, Pastor Roxanne. Roxanne. Amen. Uh, we want to shout out to G-Man and the work they're doing all over the world. We're starting to reach out in so many places that we didn't know God was going to call us and. Uh, eventually we are going to either God is going to have to provide the finances or we are going to believe God that he will speak to hearts that we can have get finances in order to do the great work that God has called us to do amen the great commission that Jesus has given us that we go into all the world yes. and preach his mighty word amen I would like to say hello to Pastor Tess and and Myla Gile and the Ramdan Church in the Philippines. We thank God for you. We thank God for your faithfulness. Yes. We thank God for your faithful viewership. Amen. And we are believing God for great and mighty things to you as you continue to be part of this great work that God is doing among the churches. You see, God is building a church, amen, that is like no other. That is not a church that is playing games. We are not playing games because the devil is not playing games. This is not nursery rhymes. We are, this is not uh, party cake, party cake, baker's man. It is not Mary had a little lamb. And yes, Mary, the mother of Jesus, had a little lamb. He was a little lamb, the lamb of God on the throne. But now he has grown, and things have become serious. The enemy is getting ready to launch his antichrist and to do some, some of the worst evil that we have heard in our lifetime. Amen? And so we are not playing. We are going forward in the power and might of the Lord, amen? amen. And so I thank God for you, um, the church in the Philippines, amen? And I give God praise and thanks to you. Um, one quick, an another announcement would be the Women's Prayer Breakfast will be this Saturday. And that is going to be um, this Saturday at 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. here. Uh, in Maryland, USA, amen. So I know you know what the time difference is so that you can join and have a good time, amen. The 23rd. The 23rd. The 23rd of this Saturday is the 23rd of July. And so we're looking forward to having you, amen, at the Women's Prayer Breakfast. And then we have the Men's Fellowship on Tuesday. Yes. This coming Tuesday. This comes to next come next Tuesday. I'm sorry, and um, at seven thirty p.m. Come and be blessed. That's come nice. and come and listen to men from around the world tell you their stories, and also tell you what the Lord is doing in their lives. Amen. To encourage each and every one of us not to give up, not to be frustrated. Amen. Amen. And be something, be an example to the young men. They're looking for something so that we haven't done all. We must stand, stand, 
having our having our loins girded about with truth amen the truth of the living god so that we can please the lord god the almighty amen, amen. and so without further ado amen. let me the next voice you're going to hear is pastor norris i know you missed him last week and um we the week before last week uh, you missed him and so he's here today and so we thank god for bringing him and, and and his wife back home safely and to god be the glory amen so without further ado the next voice you'll be hearing is pastor norris henry the man with the rainbow word in his mouth amen and so you know grab your bibles whatever your notes notepads and all that and come up to God's table and take a seat and, and enjoy the meal that he has for you today. Church, will you assist me in welcoming none other than our senior pastor, Pastor Norris Henry. Thank you, thank you, thank you all very much. Thank you for the warm welcome. It's good to be back in the saddle with every one of you yeah. and I want to uh, thank you for your prayers and also for your support yeah. we bless God for all of you who value what God is doing in breaking barriers ministries yeah. I also want to specially shout out to the church in Aruba Pastor Sylvan Johnson and his congregation. I know it's a deliverance. The, the, the name of this uh, local assemblies uh, have a deliverance in it, in it as well. But thank you for us, uh, for having us, welcoming us so warmly. You give us warm welcome and for allowing me to fill, to, to minister you the word of God in your pulpit. And we pray that you, the people were blessed in Jesus' name. I, uh, I want to say for the many who have lost loved ones in these recent times, I want you to know that when you are in the Lord, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Amen. Yes. And that's one of the reasons why Paul declares... For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Also, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So the best security to have is in Christ Jesus. Because whether we live or die... We will live forever with him. Because the Bible says, Jesus is the one that says, He that hears my word and believe on him who sent me will have everlasting life and will not be brought into condemnation, but will be passed from death to life. So it's a transition. I want also to let you know that death is not the final chapter. Death, the first death is by appointment. It's appointed unto man once to die. Every man will. Even if a lot of us may, uh, some of the generations may be here when Jesus returned, Still, the flesh and blood that they will have will fall off, will die. Yeah. And they will be changed instantly. Yeah. There will be no need for a funeral for them. Yeah. Because the dead in Christ will rise and they shall be caught up to be with them to be, meet the Lord in the air. What simply mean, it means that, that they will immediately become changed from mortal to immortality. Amen. From corruptible to incorruption. But when we pass away before he comes, 
We are transitioning now for when he comes. We are putting off this body, this tabernacle, which must go back to the earth from whence it came. As the Bible said, flesh and blood will never inherit the kingdom of God. That is why our best life is not now. Our best life is in the kingdom, is hereafter. Yeah. Our best life is hereafter. You are investing in your best life when you surrender to Jesus Christ. If you, want the, if you will settle for nothing less but God's best, then you will endeavor to wholeheartedly surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. As Paul told the saints at Rome, I beg you, <coughs> by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service or act of worship and that don't be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your minds that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god i want to ask all of you who are viewing this live today on my page Norris Henry's Facebook page on Word of God Ministries International Facebook page and on Breaking Barriers Ministries Bowie YouTube page share the link share it with as much people as you can whether on WhatsApp on Facebook timeline on emails, t texts, in whatever means possible, share it as much as you can. Let it go viral so that all, all can hear the word of God. Because we must live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the living God. I'm glad to be back here today to share God's word with you. And for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Norris Henry, the senior pastor here at Breaking Barriers Ministries, Bowie. I want to thank God for the leaders uh, he blessed us with in Pastor Ivla, Pastor uh, Paul Ikachuni, as you have heard him share the word for the past few Sundays. And you would have heard Pastor Ivla, and I'm looking forward to many more who will volunteer to be used of God in this ministry. I ask to also that you will be willing to uh, subscribe to our YouTube page. If you are not there right now, you can go find our YouTube page and, and uh, by searching on YouTube, the application YouTube, and search for Breaking Barriers Ministries Bowie and just hit the word, press the word subscribe written in red. And then afterwards hit the bell icon for notification whenever we go live. I want to give us a short exhortation today. Challenging everyone to the hearing of my voice regardless of your geographic location. Regardless of your race, rank and religion. Regardless of your nationality, culture, and social status. And my exhortation to you is simply this. Avoid self-deception. Avoid self-deception. The reason why many of us find ourselves in under unnecessary stress or even making terrible choices is simply because 
of one of the deadliest enemy that is called self self we are our most dangerous enemy Because we think that we know better than God. That's right. And therefore we want to do it our way. When our way can only lead to eternal disaster. To destruction. There is this, uh, the psalmist David says that there is a way, not the psalmist David, uh, Proverbs. Wise man Solomon said, there is a way that seems right unto a man. But at the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. And some of us may wonder if we are speaking about a physical death. No. I am speaking about the eternal separation from God, which is the second death. Amen. Yes. The second death is by choice. Mm -hmm. The first is by appointment. Yes. We can never overemphasize that. We must understand that it is appointed unto man once to die. Believe it. But just that we do not know the time and the hour when that will happen. We don't even know how it will happen. I've known of people who were diagnosed with a deadly disease, even with cancer, and survive it. And I've known of people who also was diagnosed with this deadly cancerous disease and was not killed by that cancer. Something else take them out. Am I right? I've known of people who have been very healthy and suddenly drop dead. I've heard of a story of a man who exercise often, regularly, and do his annual checkup, and uh, eat properly, healthy, have a great physique, and uh, went into the doctor's office for his regular checkup, and was given a clean bill of health. And as soon as he went out the door of the doctor's office, dropped dead. Having been given a clean bill of health. And I've known of people who have been given the worst news about their health. And live until now. You see, our time are in the hands of God. And that is why we must ready at all times for what can happen at any time. Therefore, because we are finite being, our understanding are limited. Our abilities are limited. We must then trust in the one whose ability is unlimited and whose understanding is infinite. God is infinitely omniscient, infinitely omnipotent, infinitely omnipresent, and it tells me then that we must trust him wholeheartedly and never lean to our own understanding. 
For when we fail to do that, we are becoming victims of self-deception. Our text today is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 through 23. And this is Paul's exhortation to the saints at Corinth. Listen to what he says. Let no one deceive himself. Let me repeat that. Let no one deceive himself. Amen. Come yes. on, somebody. Yes. Yes. He did not say let, do not let the devil deceive you. He is saying to you, do not deceive yourself. Amen. Stop fooling yourself, in other words. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool, Amen. that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Mm -hmm. yes. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. Mm -hmm. yeah. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise. That they are futile. And he's speaking about those who are intelligent. Therefore let no one boast in men. For all things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas. Or the world or life or death. Come on. Or things present or things to come. All, all are yours. And you are Christ. And Christ is God's. To be a victim of worldly wisdom is to be a victim of self-deception. Which is vain notions of serving God and religion while thinking... You are doing the church's good by your carnal and worldly wisdom. And with false hopes of escaping the vengeance of God for sowing the tears of error, heresy, and discord among the people of God. Yes. Listen to what Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 5 verse 21. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Yes. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, guess what? He deceived himself. And that's what is written in Galatians chapter 6 verse 3. If a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceive himself. And then he went on to say in, chapters, in Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, be not deceived. Why? Because God is not mocked. Be not deceived because God is not mocked. Don't deceive yourself about the things of God. Amen. Don't deceive yourself about life in this world. Amen. Because God can never be mocked. Right. Are you hearing me today? Mm -hmm. It is impossible to mock God. That's right. <laughs> The Bible said, fools make a mock of sin. Fools. It's the very fools that says in their heart, there is no God for me. And that's because the fools are fooling themselves. Every 
only one who foolishly reject God are a victim of self-deception. God is not mocked because whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Because if you sow to the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And the only way you are going to sow to the spirit is if you stop leaning to your own understanding. And you fully give over to God and allow him to direct every aspect of your life. Are you hearing me today? Do not deceive yourself. So if you are going to avoid self-deception, then what does the, 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 our text declare? He said, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Come on, somebody. What that means? Not that properly speaking, fool, folly is the way to wisdom. No. Folly is not the way to wisdom. But that men will be wise in a spiritual sense must first learn to know himself. Come on. First learn to know your own inadequacies. First learn to know your own flaws. First learn to know your own limitations. Are you hearing me? Must be convinced of and acknowledge his own folly. And embrace the gospel of Christ. Which is esteemed foolishness by the world. Submit to the ordinances of Christ, which are despised by men, because he was despised and rejected of men. And take up the cross of Christ and follow him, bearing his reproach and persecution for his sake than which nothing is more ridiculous with carnal men. He must deny his worldly wisdom, his carnal self-righteousness, and wholly rest and rely on Christ and his righteousness for eternal life and happiness. Are you hearing me today? And so will he become truly wise unto salvation. Why? Because he will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the living God. Hallelujah. Am I making sense to somebody? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let me share with you, because of time, one aspect of avoiding Self-deception. And that's number one is submission to God. Submission to God. We must at all times submit to the will of and the word of Almighty God. That means then we will not be leaning to our own understanding. We will trust in God to enlighten us and, in, and enable us to know his mind in every given situation. So that we can see things in God's perspective and endeavor to do what is pleasing in his sight. This is why it is written in Proverbs. Trust in the Lord. 
Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean up on your own understanding in all your ways, not some of it, all of it. The ones they may think that you may take for granted that is too small for it for to, 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 that got to, to give to the Lord. No, small foxes spoils the vines. Don't take anything for granted. Even the little issues in your life, you need to acknowledge the Lord. Put it in the hands of the Lord. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Don't wait until it's gone beyond, beyond, beyond control, but then you will then put it to the Lord. When it's when it beyond your control, when it got big, no, give it to Him immediately. Amen. You hear me? In all your ways, acknowledge him and then allow him to direct your path. That means it's not my will, but his be done. Yes. Jesus is the living example of doing that. He came to do the will of the Father. Yes. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. As he prayed in agony in the garden of Gethsemane, Father, if it's possible, let this cup be passed from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Yeah. Hallelujah. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. He shall. As long you acknowledge him, it is guaranteed that he will direct you. Yeah. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Whenever you walk out of the will of God, it's obvious you did not acknowledge him. You did not put him, you did not put it in, the ha in his hands. You decide you're going to do it your way. But I want you to know that your way can only cause disaster. And then when you get into the mess, when you make a mess of things, then you know what God to come back and fix it. Yeah. Fix what you break. Yeah. Yeah. Are you hearing me? When prevention is better than cure, instead of uh, uh, just put putting the situation into God's hand, because it obviously God gets your your attention. Now you want to give God your attention because you can't do nothing about it any longer. So Lord help me because I can't do anything about it. In, in the first place, you should let the Lord direct you, and you will never have gone wrong. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He shall, and this is one next exhortation he gives on, do not be wise in your own eyes. Are you hearing me today? Regardless of your achievements, regardless of your privileges, regardless of the initials you have behind your name, stop deceiving yourself. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you know, regardless of whether you call yourself a doctor or a professor, Amen. stop deceiving yourself. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Uh, what will happen? It will be health to your flesh and strength. Okay. To your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. You put the Lord first in your life. You seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all that is necessary will be added to you. I told someone the other day that regardless of what you are going through, you do not run from the devil. You need to submit to God and he will give you the grace to resist the devil and the devil will have no choice but to flee from you. You got to understand that the enemy must be afraid of us, not us again, afraid of the devil. 
And you that is only possible when we are in the Lord. That is only possible when we do not deceive ourselves and when we allow the Lord to have full control of our daily lives. That is only possible when we trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and don't lean to our own understanding. That is only possible when we acknowledge Him in all of our ways and allow Him to direct our path. The Bible said, do you see a man wise in his own eyes? And that was a question. I guess it possibly maybe is a, was a rhetorical question. Proverbs 6 to, to verse 12 says, do you see a man wise in his own eyes? <laughs> and the answer came, more hope for a fool than for him. In other words, there is more hope for a fool than for that man who is wise in his own eyes. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so in other words, he is, if he is so uh, intelligent that he knows everything, that there is more hope for an ignorant, illiterate person than for him. Am I making sense to somebody today? You see a man wise in his own eyes. There is more hope for the one who is uneducated <laughs> that lives aimlessly, ignorantly than for him. Because obviously, at some point, the Lord is able to perform a miracle on the one who is illiterate uneducated where they can admit that they are and God can perform a miracle and make them wise unto salvation but a person who is wise in their own eyes will be too proud and will not submit to the will and word of God because it will become an insult to their intelligence are you hearing me today? We need to realize this. That if we are being deceived by ourselves, then it only leads to self-righteousness and self-contradiction. Paul told the saints at Corinth, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. He also said to them, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate nor abusers of themselves with mankind. None of them will inherit the kingdom of God. And no matter how, what kind of uh, logic you may put to justify certain sins of society, in God's agenda, they are an abomination. And none will enter God's kingdom. So do you see anyone who want to be wise must first become a fool? Why? Because the wisdom of this world is foolishness unto God. Are you hearing me today? The wisdom of this world is foolishness unto God. Paul rightfully says to uh, Timothy, he said to him that evil men and imposters or seducers will grow worse 
and worse deceiving and being deceived but you must continue in the things which you have learned and being assured of knowing from whom you have learned and that from a child or from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus because all scriptures given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work and the only way you will observe the word is if you receive it like a little child submission is necessary to experience the reception of wisdom from heaven Jesus said in Luke's gospel chapter 18 verse 17 Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. So I say to you, our biggest and most dangerous enemy today is self-deception. Ourselves. For some reason, the reason why we are not being full of the Spirit to, to walk in the Spirit is because we are too full of ourselves. And when you are full of yourself, you're deceiving, you deceive yourself that you are flowing in the Spirit when you are only carnal in your thinking and daily living. Because to be carnally minded is death. And to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I want you to know that God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. And therefore, when we submit to God, he will give us the grace to resist the devil. The devil will have to flee when we resist him. And more than that, God will give us his Holy Spirit of wisdom and revelation so for the knowledge of him so that the eyes of our understanding being enlightened we will know the hope of our calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and the exceeding greatness of his power to all of us who believe according to the working of his mighty power so i say to you hear and heed the word of God just like a little child being submissive submit being being sub being in submission to God humbling yourselves under the mighty hand of God so that he can exalt you in due season if we all humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, we will be a people who are minding the same thing and believe in the same thing and who are able to live in harmony in the sight of God and demonstrate the love of God among ourselves simply because we are free from self-deception. Paul told the saints at Rome, in Romans chapter 12, verse 16, Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate, or associate with the humble. Be not wise in your own conceits. Amen. Are you hearing me today? Yeah. Be not wise in your own conceits. That means we must always endeavor to experience the power of God 
and the wisdom of God. You need to realize today that when we receive the word and apply the word, it will cause us to live a life that is pleasing to God and make us wise unto salvation because wisdom is practical insight to life. As James admonish those to whom he wrote, be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridled not his tongue, but deceived his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Are you hearing me? Let me let you understand the reason why we ought to avoid self-deception. And I'll close with this. It is what Paul rightfully wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And he said to them in verse 18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of the, this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Hallelujah. It pleased God that by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. No wonder he went on to say that the Jews look for signs and the Greek seek for wisdom but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block to the Greek foolishness but unto us who are saved Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God avoid self-deception and experience be uh, in submission so that you can experience the true reception of heavenly wisdom so that you can live a life that is pleasing to God every day and see things in his, in, in, in his perspective so that you will never be anxious about anything so that in everything with prayer and, and, and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your request known to him so that his peace that surpass human comprehension can be a garrison around your heart and minds through Jesus Christ. Regardless of how much you achieve in this life, we need to know everything here are temporal. And we must avoid self-deception so that we will not be hindered from experience all that is eternal in the heavens. This is why those who claim to be rich and running after the almighty dollar need to understand that if you are, you can be rich in this world and poor and naked in the sight of God. As we, Paul, uh, uh, as, as the Lord spoke to the church at Laodicea, the Laodicean church, the angel of the church of Laodicea write these things, says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works. That you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot. I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich. 
have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see as many as I love I rebuke and chasten therefore be zealous and repent so that you will no longer be a victim of self-deception but be fully in submission to the Lord God Almighty let us pray Heavenly Father I thank you for all that you enable me to share with your people today and I believe you to touch everyone with your spirit and with your power from the curl of their heads to the soles of their feet that none will ever be the same again but everyone will be delivered from self-deception and walk in victory over the powers of the enemy in Jesus precious name I pray and now God's people say amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. and amen, amen. Yes. hallelujah glory to, God. glory to God praise his name I want to thank you for joining I want to encourage you to share and come back next week when we will once more share the pure and unadulterated word of the living God with all of you in the world. So raise your hands to heavens with me. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior, to him be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And our God's people say, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Wherever you are, put your hands together for him today. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for watching. And we will see you again next week.